All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk in a little bit more depth about workspace browsers. So off we go. So to open a workspace browser, we go to window and then new workspace and then default for now. We'll also look at sound base in this video. Also, if there are open workspaces, you can get to them through this second menu item workspaces, but I'm just gonna open a default for now. That's also option or alt I. So here's what opens up our workspace browser. A workspace browser is basically a beefed up file explorer with some extra audio features in it. So we're gonna look at some of those extra audio features in here. The first thing we might wanna know is what's gonna happen over here on the left. So our locations will include sound libraries that have been added into Pro Tools and we'll deal with those in a few minutes, but the only one that's installed on my computer currently is the Avid Loop Masters, which comes free with Pro Tools. You just need to install it separately. Volumes will include all the drives, including the hard drive of your computer, but any external drives as well. The current session that's open will show up here as well so that you can do things with that session. Track presets, which I'm not gonna worry about right now catalogs, user, so a few other things. The important ones are those first four. Sound libraries, volumes, meaning hard drives, and your session, and then your track presets. All right, so you will see if we look at a sound in here, that it will have a preview of the waveform. And this will not always be here. So you will see this generated waveform view if the waveform has previously been calculated and stored or if the file has been imported into a Pro Tools session or the file has been auditioned in a workspace browser like this at some point. So for these, you can play them back by hitting the play button. You can also choose places to play, so you don't have to start right at the beginning by hitting the play button. You can also click a spot inside here and it will start at that point. And then if I click here, right, so I just clicked on that spot and it started the preview, the audition there. Uh, and then you can also hit spacebar to do this when a file is selected. Now, if spacebar isn't working to start your preview, you can check this pop-up menu and make sure that spacebar toggles file preview is checked. If it's not checked, then spacebar won't have that effect. You can go through and audition all kinds of things by just clicking around in here with these different files. So all kinds of fun sounds in there. Okay, so here's another workspace browser open and you can see that there's no waveform here. So if you want to generate that waveform, you just need to play the file once. And you'll notice, and you notice it, it did it really fast, right? Right away I have this uh, waveform generated for my preview. So if you don't have one, just previewing it once will generate that waveform. So just because there's no waveform showing here does not mean that there's no audio. It just means that it hasn't generated the visual for it yet. So another thing that we can do in here is here's my session. And notice my session tempo right now is 118 in the open session. So I'm looking at this workspace browser and if I click this metronome icon right here so this button is called the audio files conform to session tempo button but it's basically a little metronome right so my session tempo is 118 and i've now highlighted this metronome icon if i play this back notice it's slower and i'm going to pause it if i turn it off and play it back. Hear how fast it is. And then if I turn it back on, it goes back to my slower tempo in my session. So it's great that you can audition these samples uh, at the tempo of the session that you might want to bring them into. Now, say your session has different tempi in it. So I'm going to go into my session and just create a new tempo right here. 
and hit plus. I'm going to put in, I'm getting that dialog box. I'm going to put 160 just so it's really obvious. So now I have a new tempo in my tempo map. So if I select here, somewhere where the tempo is 118, uh, it will demo at 118. If I click over here past the 160 where the tempo is now 160, uh, it will in my workspace browser adjust to that tempo. So here's my workspace browser back. It's adjusting the tempo. Now I should hear this at 160. And then I'm going to click elsewhere, back here maybe, get my workspace browser back, which was this one. And then if I play it back here, it should be slower again. Yeah. So you can hear how much slower that is now. So if you want to audition the audio at the tempo, at some tempo that's in your session, just make sure you place a selector, place the playback head, right? Somewhere where that tempo has changed and it will automatically find the tempo that corresponds to that spot. So the metronome button is actually applying elastic audio processing to this file in order to change its tempo. We'll learn about elastic audio more later on, but if you need to change which algorithm is used to adjust the tempo, uh, you can do that by right clicking that icon and you can choose polyphonic, rhythmic, monophonic, or verispeed for those and have it process using that algorithm. And we'll learn much more about those algorithms uh, later on. Now, if you wanna hear what you're previewing here uh, looped, you can also choose to loop the playback of the preview. So as we listen, this one right now will only play through once, right? And then it'll stop. <laughs> this one's kind of hilarious, right? And stop. So if I want that to keep uh, looping, I can, in the drop down menu here, choose loop preview, then it will loop. And you can also do that on the play button here, right clicking and choosing loop preview. Right, then it'll keep playing that perhaps as you play back something in your session, which is exactly what we're going to do now. I'm going to play the, back the session with this kind of silly 80s drum sound. And then in my workspace, what I'm going to do is hit preview. And now I can hear that it's previewing this sample with this audio in the session. So it's a super cool way to check out what's going on in the session, listen back to the session, and then play back some sample that you might want to add to the session at the right tempo. So that's a really cool trick. So you might have noticed that I had to switch between these windows and it took me forever. There is a way to get the session to play back uh, without leaving the workspace browser. And that is the zero on the numeric keypad. So if I press zero right now, it starts my session playback, which you can see up here. And then if I hit play on one of these, it will start on the next downbeat. And notice everything's lining up. Notice that everything's lining up really nicely, right? So it's automatically making sure that this sample is lining up with the tempo of my session at the right point in the rhythm. So pretty cool. So there's another kind of workspace browser called a sound base workspace browser. And the real difference is not much. You could actually turn a regular workspace browser into an interface like this one, because what it's really doing is just setting uh, search tags. You can add your own tags if you want to, and then you can also use pre-tagged libraries like the one that comes free with Pro Tools, which is that Loop Masters one, right? So you'll notice there's a whole bunch of tags over here that each sound has had applied to it. So it's some metadata that's applied to the wave or the AIFF file that puts a little bit of information about what's in this audio. And the cool thing is, is you can search those tags. So maybe I just want drum stuff. I can click that drums tag here and then it will bring up all the samples that have drums in their tags. And then if you click another one, you can further filter that search, right? So you could go, oh, I don't know, 
uh, kick and now it might be just kick sounds right so maybe I just wanted to find a kick so I click drums then I click kick and now I just have kick drum hits I can also delete these by clicking X or if I want to totally clear this I can hit escape and that will remove all the tags I can also type things like alien and see what I get right all right so say that you close this out on accident so in order to toggle the tags view here uh, or so maybe you want to hide it or you want to get it back that is this icon here it's like a rectangle with an X in it so you can click on and off that guy and that will give you your search tags then you can also the kind of file is able to be specified you can choose a key a time signature any of those things uh, with this advanced search option so you can also toggle that with the uh, search plus icon here so you have choices about how you view your sound base workspace browser then finally say that I click drums and I want no kick drum so I want nothing with a kick I can hold down option and click kick and that will make sure that it's drums with no kick involved so I'm actually removing that from the search right so you can limit your search by holding down option or alt and then clicking a tag so maybe I want drums but I want no kick drums and then that's what I do so I click drums and then I option click kick and get a limited search result right now I'm getting snares and I'm getting hi-hats maybe it's kind of fun cool so let's say that we need to import some files here uh, maybe we like that what's that one that I liked is it this one? Oh yeah I like that one just a quick review on how to import audio from a workspace browser uh, or a sound based browser it's the same so remember that you can drag and drop a file right into your clip list or onto a track I can also get it onto a new track by clicking and dragging into this gray area or onto the tracks list or by holding shift and then dragging and that will also give me a new track right there okay a couple other things we can do when we want to import audio into our session so remember when you click and drag a file into your session from a workspace browser or a folder or whatever uh, often Pro Tools will just make a reference to the file it won't actually copy that file into your audio files folder so there's a couple things that will make it copy automatically so one is if it's at a different sample rate from your session it will copy it will also copy if say it's a mp3 instead of a wave if it's a non-native file format for Pro Tools it will copy it over when it does its conversion so say you pulled an mp3 in here it would convert it to a wave and then place that copy in the audio files folder but most of the time you want a copy so there's a couple ways to force it to copy no matter what so one way to do that is to option drag it into your session so that can either be to the clip list or to an actual track like that that will automatically copy that into your audio files folder because I held down option while I did my drag the other way to do it is with settings so that it just automatically happens whenever you drag in and that can be found in Pro Tools preferences and then that dialog will come up and it's in processing and then you check the box that says automatically copy files on import and that will save you that extra work and hopefully give a bit of added sense of security so a couple other things one is a MIDI file dragged into your session will open a dialog box that asks you whether you want to also import the MIDI files tempo and key signature so say that while you were writing your song you created some MIDI in some other program and you want to use that as a template to start your Pro Tools session with your live recording that MIDI file might ha already have the key and the tempo that you want so in that case when you do do that drag you want to say in that dialogue yes import the tempo and key signature information and that will overwrite your session tempo so know that that MIDI file has the power to overwrite the tempo and key rulers in your session 
uh, and then if you choose no then it will keep the destination sessions settings also when you're doing things with video often or maybe even with music you want to pull in um, say a special effect or a sound into a very specific place in your session so you can do that with spot in a couple of different ways so one is you can just switch to spot in your edit modes and then in your workspace browser you just drag in and the spot dialog will open up and then you can say you know what I want that at bar 13 I can just type that in the start point and hit OK and there it is I can also choose a spot in my session say bar 18 on the downbeat and then go back into my workspace and right click on that file and choose spot to edit insertion and when I click that it automatically pops the audio right to where I had my selection so pretty cool trick there too uh, just so you know you can only do that if the tr destination track is the same track type and same channel format as the audio you're pulling in otherwise you'll get an error so for instance I just pulled in a sample of stereo audio right so that means that the track the destination track needs to be also a stereo audio track if it was mono it wouldn't have worked and that's about it for that one pretty cool tricks right that workspace browser is pretty nice for auditioning samples all right I'll see you in the next one